Vegas. I hope you can hear and see me right again. And I would like to introduce to you now Professor uh, Mohamed El Kassas. If you join me now, that would be a big pleasure. Are you there? Yeah, already with it's, the presentation. Perfect. You yeah. are quick. So let me uh, let us let me introduce you though first. You know, to our audience tonight. Uh, big pleasure to have you, um, Professor. You're the associate professor in chief of endemic medicine and hepatogastroenterology at the Faculty of Medicine at Helwan University, and yes. president of Earth. Earth, one of the scientific organizations joining us here tonight. And um, I'm sure maybe you can also uh, say some words about Earth. I mean, as you know, we are uh, today giving away also memberships to your association, you know, just to, in, in support of Earth. Earth stands for the Egyptian Association for Research and Training in Hepatogastroenterology. Your main interests, from what I understand, are or include hepatocellular carcinoma, viral hepatitis, infectious diseases, and of course, gastroenterology. So we very much look forward to learning about the role of gut microbiota in liver cancer, as it already says on the screen. I hand over to you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks a lot, Fabian, and thank you, uh, Valentina, for the preparation. Thanks, Professor Spiller, for the great lectures that I really enjoyed. Um, which made my uh, my mission so hard. Um, uh, thanks for Sedico Egypt for inviting me to participate in this great event. Um, yes, I'm the president of the Egyptian Association for Research and Training in Hepatogastroenterology, uh, Earth. Uh, our society is currently one of the uh, largest uh, in scientific societies working in the field of gastroenterology and hepatology um, in the Middle East, not only in Egypt. Uh, we are um, a daughter society in UAG, a member society in uh, World Gastroenterology Organization. Uh, we have um, around 500 uh, members in our society uh, and the number is increasing. Yeah, okay. Um, Let's go to our lecture today, uh, the role of gut microbiota in liver cancer. As an introduction for hepatocellular carcinoma, of course, liver cirrhosis and HCC constitute the most chronic form of liver disease and are designated as end-stage liver diseases. HCC is the most common type of cancer and the fifth most common cancer worldwide and the fourth most common cause of cancer-related deaths worldwide. Hepatocellular carcinoma has a poor prognosis and uh, the curative options are very uh, limited, uh, varying between surgical and non-surgical treatments based on the stage that we discover the disease at. Of course, uh, microbiome uh, in a world dominated by microbes, not only in terms of pure biomass, but also diversity and gene pool, our organism has developed the mechanisms to engage in mutual relationships with microbes, which are present at its surface, including the gut. Moreover, the presence of efficient barrier restrict contact or surface areas and the prevent microbiota from invading our organisms. Uh, the microbiome exerts essential functions in health and disease, modulating key processes in metabolism, inflammation, and immunity. Recent evidences has revealed a key role of microbiome in carcinogenesis, as well as anti-cancer immune response in mouse models and patients. And um, most of our evidences that we will discuss today uh, are actually coming from animal models, especially mouse models for hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, so coming to the relationship between liver and microbiomes, while the liver is not in direct contact with microbiota, but actually it has a tight anatomic link to the gut. The physiologic transport of nutrient-rich blood from the intestine to liver is accompanied despite the highly efficient 
multi-level intestinal barrier by low-grade exposure to gut microbiota derived metabolites and products often termed microbiota associated molecular patterns, MAMS. Um, actually, we will have some um, terms and expressions that we will uh, use and will be repeated uh, in our um, lecture today. And this is the first one, MAMS, the microbiota associated molecular patterns. In the liver, kefir cells is the most important uh, immune cell, serve as efficient bacterial firewall protecting the liver from bacterial infections. Chronic liver disease is associated with qualitative and quantitative alterations of the gut microbiota. This is the dysbiosis. And this is our second term that we will use frequently. Dysbiosis is the qualitative and the quantitative alterations of the gut microbiota. Uh, we have accumulating evidence that the gut epithelial, epithelial uh, barrier functions and the microbiota are associated with the development of hematocellular carcinoma. Uh, changes in the intestinal barrier cause uh, leakness. Leakness is the third word or the third term that we are facing, uh, leading to hepatic exposure to MAMS and bacterial metabolites in chronic liver disease. Thus, microbiota exerts dichotomous rules, which include promotion of cancer development in the setting of chronic liver disease, as well as anti-tumor responses. The intestinal uh, epithelial uh, barrier um, actually strict separation of microbial entities from the host compartment forms the basis of the uh, symbiotic relationship between host and microbiota. In intestine, this uh, partitioning is achieved by well-maintained multi-layer barrier, which are the intact epithelial uh, lining and the secreted factors like IgA and the defensins. The gut barrier is a highly dynamic system and it can rapidly adjust. Continuous sampling of gut microorganisms by specialized epithelial cells, its name is M cells, regulates the microbiota through the secretion of antibacterial peptides by penis cells and vice versa, the intestinal barrier and the epithelial uh, cell growth. Uh, intestinal barrier and epithelial cell growth are regulated by the microbiota. The microbiota has protective rule against cholesterol the cell infection, as we know, and the increased susceptibility of germ-free mice to infection with pathogens. Bile acid uh, uh, is also important. It regulates the epithelial barrier function and the proliferation of the intestinal epithelial cells. Uh, through the uh, pharmacoid X-activated receptor, the FXR uh, dependent and the epidermal growth factor receptor dependent uh, pathways. Also controlling the growth and adhesions of the intestinal bacteria. Bile acid provide an important link between the liver, the bacterial microbiota and the intestine. Bile acid uh, is metabolized by bacteria and sensed by FXR expressed by intestinal epithelial cells, which in turn provide feedback to liver uh, through the FGF19 uh, path. Um, actually, we have a lot of um, studies that discuss the, the changes of the bacteria microbiota in patient with hepatocellular carcinoma with different backgrounds, background of cirrhosis, uh, patient with early HCC versus cirrhosis, patient with NASH, patient with viral hepatitis, hepatitis B and C, or combined infection. And these changes um, included uh, a lot of uh, microbiota or a lot of organisms that uh, uh, is, is functioning as microbiota, like Escherichia coli, um, uh, Klebsiella, bacteroids, uh, Bifidibacterium, uh, and others. The main mechanisms through which microbiota can cause hepatocellular carcinoma in patients with cirrhosis, especially, 
are the leaky gut and the dysbiosis. Cirrhosis is associated with increased occurrence of gut-derived bacterial infections, such as spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Increased bacterial translocation and dysbiosis observed in earlier stages of chronic river disease and promote inflammation, fibrogenesis, and the progression to cirrhosis. Dysbiosis and the leaky gut are the prominent features of all the stages of chronic liver disease or the changes in uh, uh, microbiome in chronic liver disease. Dysbiosis and gut leakiness are linked uh, to each other. Uh, on the one hand, dysbiosis may contribute to a more permeable intestinal barrier. On the other hand, a leaky gut enables bacterial metabolites and MAMs associated with dysbiotic microbiota to more readily translocate and reach the liver. Uh, to start with leaky gut, lipopolysaccharide is a secret word. Lipopolysaccharide is a cell wall component of gram negative bacteria that triggers inflammation uh, through the, till, uh, the toll like receptors, TLR4, most uh, used marker, lipopolysaccharide, for translocation of inflammatory bacterial MAMs. Uh, the portal levels of lipopolysaccharides have the highest levels in patients with child C uh, cirrhosis. Thus, chronically injured liver is subject to increased exposure to a wide range of uh, uh, toll-like receptor ligands, uh, other bacterial products, and metabolites. Um, we have what we call MAM TLR axis. High circulating lipopolysaccharide levels in mice and patients with chronic liver disease and HCC demonstrate the presence of leaky gut during multiple stages of chronic liver disease and the hepatocarcinogenesis. Functional experiments in germ-free, gut sterilized, uh, toll-like receptor deficient, and lipopolysaccharide treated mice provided evidence that the leaky gut through lipopolysaccharide and its receptors, uh, toll-like receptor 4, promotes hepatic carcinogenesis. HCC development induced by then uh, CCL4. Uh, then CCL4 is one of the important uh, mouse uh, models for hepatosphere carcinoma. Uh, it is uh, uh, hepatosphere carcinoma associated with cirrhosis without uh, other factors like uh, uh, diabetes. So then CCL4 uh, was an important uh, model to study uh, many of the uh, uh, causes and pathways of hepatic carcinogenesis in cirrhotic uh, uh, mice. Uh, so HCC development induced by then CCL4 was attenuated in gut sterilized and germ-free uh, mice. Increased bacterial translocation also generates a chronic inflammatory state in the liver. The inflammatory responses in liver are mediated by the interaction between MAMS and the host uh, uh, pattern recognition receptors, especially the toll-like receptors. Of course, toll-like receptor 4 is the most important one. Uh, TLR4 is present in multiple hepatic cell types, including kaffir cells, hepatic stellate cells, endothelial cells, and hepatocytes. Uh, TLR4 uh, expressed on liver resident cells is responsible for promotion of fibrogenesis and the hepatocarcinogenesis in mice. Lipopolysaccharides from leaky gut promote hepatocarcinogenesis via multiple cellular targets. In hepatic stellate cells, TLR4 activation leads it to uh, 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 nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer uh, uh, of activated uh, uh, B uh, cells. Uh, mediated upregulation of the hepatomitrogen uh, uh, epiregulin. Epiregulin is an epidermal growth factor family member with a potent mitogenic effect on hepatocyte. Um, another uh, mechanism uh, for the lipopolysaccharide is the lipopolysaccharide TRL, TLR4 axis, which promotes HCC formation uh, through the uh, NF uh, kappa B uh, cells mediated prevention of hepatocyte apoptosis. Activation of this bus way in kaffir cells 
leads to TNF dependent and interleukin 6 dependent compensatory hepatocyte proliferation, as well as reduced oxidative stress and apoptosis. Uh, coming to the other mechanism, which is dysbiosis. Uh, dysbiosis, um, the prominent role of dysbiosis in chronic liver disease was emphasized by studies which analyzed the gut microbiota by sequencing and machine-based le based learning in several uh, major diseases and have been linked dysbiosis to some diseases, including cirrhosis. Uh, actually, liver cirrhosis, or uh, more precisely, the end-stage liver disease was the disease most linked to dysbiosis. Several studies found a profound dysbiosis in patients with advanced uh, NASH, specifically NASH, um, which was uh, among the chronic liver diseases that was linked to dysbiosis. The most profound changes in gut microbiota are found between healthy patients and patients with cirrhosis. Evidence also suggests that there are differences between patients with cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. Intestinal overgrowth of the E. coli and the HCC and cirrhosis was first noticed in uh, 2016. Um, fecal microbial diversity was decreased from healthy control to cirrhosis, but it was increased from cirrhosis to early HCC with uh, cirrhosis. Changes in microbial profile in HCC were not consistent between different studies. Uh, we have, of course, uh, many uh, etiological factors like the different etiologies, the geographical uh, uh, variations, genetic variation, nutritional intakes. Uh, it also appears that differences between patients with cirrhosis and HCC and cirrhosis alone were smaller than differences between healthy patients and patients with uh, cirrhosis. Uh, thus, it is not only likely that microbiome-based diagnostic tests will be more powerful for cirrhosis detection than for HCC detection, but it is likely that the functional impact of the microbiome on HCC development is mainly related to cirrhosis-associated alterations rather than specific hepatocellular carcinoma-associated alterations. Uh, the gut microbiomes of patients with cirrhosis have an increase in potentially pathogenic bacteria, along with reduced the number of bacteria with beneficial properties Alterations are driven by characteristic uh, features of end-stage liver disease as reduced bile output and changes to the intestinal secretion of antimicrobial uh, peptides. Key changes in cirrhosis include enrichment of uh, villonella or streptococcus species, as well as detect decreased bacteria from uh, the older uh, clostridials. Uh, the majority of patients enriched species were of buccal origin, suggesting an invasion of the gut from the mouse in liver cirrhosis. Um, we have some studies that uh, uh, tested the uh, transplantation of the dysbiotic microbiota uh, into control diet fed mice. It was a mice study. Uh, and this transplantation had undergone, uh, or, or uh, this, uh, uh, this biotic microbiota came from uh, mice with bile duct ligation. This transplantation leads to increased liver damage and fibrosis in the recipients. Uh, also, uh, dysbiosis represented a transmissible risk factor in a genetic NASH model in which NASH was triggered by uh, inflamed some deficiency co-housing of dysbiotic uh, inflamed some deficient mice with control mice resulted in the development of NASH in control mice. Although studies demonstrating transmissible HCC risk by transferring microbiota are still missing, several uh, functional studies point towards contrib a contribution of uh, this biosis. Um, this graph uh, may summarize uh, all what we uh, detailed about the uh, mechanism 
uh, that uh, or through which the microbiota can lead to uh, hematocellular carcinoma. We have two main mechanisms, which are dysbiosis and leaky gut, as you see. Uh, leaky gut will uh, lead to uh, uh, the passage of MAMS, especially the lipopolysaccharide. The MAMS through its pathway with uh, toll-like receptors, especially toll-like receptor 4, will lead to uh, uh, inflammation, fibrosis, proliferation, and anti-proptotic uh, uh, effect in the hepatocytes. On the other way, dysbiosis will lead to uh, increased the bacterial metabolism, especially uh, the oxycholic acid uh, with activation of hepatic lead cells uh, and uh, fibrosis and also the inflammatory cascade. Both the fibrosis and the inflammatory uh, cascade that is uh, stimulated will lead to the hepatic carcinogenesis. Um, most of chronic liver diseases are linked to uh, gut microbiota, uh, alcoholic liver disease. Uh, of course, alcoholic liver disease is one of the most common chronic liver diseases. Uh, actually, the risk of hepatocellular carcinoma that is related to alcoholic liver disease is uh, much lower than uh, viral hepatitis, for example. But uh, the, high, the high number and the large number of patients living with alcoholic liver disease will lead at the end to have uh, more patients with hepatocellular carcinoma on top of alcoholic liver disease. Uh, in alcoholic liver disease, we have a study. We have studies that uh, stated uh, that even a single uh, binge of alcohol is sufficient to increase bacterial translocation, as evidenced by an increase of lipopolysaccharide in portal blood of uh, uh, in uh, uh, rats. Uh, serum lipopolysaccharide also uh, uh, is increased in patient with uh, chronic alcohol use. The ability of ethanol and its metabolite acetaldehyde to disrupt tight junctions uh, contributes to a high level of bacterial translocation in patients living with alcoholic liver disease. Uh, we have a large number of studies uh, that uh, have shown a key contribution of gut microbiota, uh, TLR4 access to alcoholic liver disease, uh, global. TLR4 deficiency in mice as well as gut sterilization with non-absorbable antibiotics in rats reduces hepatic steatosis, oxidative stress, and inflammation. Uh, the uh, other disease that is linked to gut microbiota is NAFLD. NAFLD also the same uh, uh, have a lower relative risk of uh, increase of, of uh, developing hepatocellular carcinoma, but again, NAFLD is currently the most prevalent liver disease worldwide. Uh, metagenomic and microbiota transplantation studies have shown that the gut microbiota from individuals who are obese is more efficient at energy extraction and therapy contributes to uh, obesity. Treatment with antibiotics ameliorates high fat diet induced NAFLD uh, in mice in some studies. Uh, this biotic microbiota from mice fed with a high fat diet metabolize and convert dietary choline into methyl amines, resulting in low circulating levels of plasma uh, phosphatidylcholine. Uh, these low levels of phosphatidylcholine impaired secretion of VLDL therapy. Uh, uh, VLDL, uh, therapy, uh, th thereby reducing hepatic lipid export and contributing to uh, fatty liver. So alterations in choline metabolism might link dysbiosis to the development of NAFLD. Uh, coming to the uh, chronic viral hepatitis, which is in contrast to uh, alcoholic liver disease and NAFLD, we don't have much data about the role of the gut microbiota in chronic uh, viral hepatitis, uh, dysbiosis and alterations of the gut liver axis in patients with end stage viral hepatitis and cirrhosis are similar to cirrhosis from any other cause. 
it is not known actually if the gut microbiota contributes to the uh, pathophysiology of chronic viral hepatitis and its progression to more uh, advanced uh, disease. Um, again, with chronic viral hepatitis, whether the impaired response to uh, hepatitis B virus is mediated in some studies uh, by specific bacteria or the result of broad suppression of the bacteria microbiota. It's not actually uh, uh, an answered question till now. Uh, hepatitis B virus titer in patients positively correlate with the risk of disease progression and the HCC development. And so the gut microbiota might theoretically control antiviral responses and the affected disease progression and the HCC development development in patients with chronic viral hepatitis. Uh, liver fibrosis due to any cause. Uh, we have also uh, a lot of studies uh, discuss discussing the role of gut microbiota and disease progression in liver fibrosis, regardless of the uh, background of cirrhosis or the background of, of, of fibrosis. Uh, treatment with non-absorbable antibiotics, as we will discuss uh, later, resulted in a strong reduction of fibrosis dis despite increased liver injury in patients with uh, liver uh, fibrosis. Um, another important point, point is the immune surveillance, the microbiome and the immune surveillance. Um, innate as well as adaptive immune responses may promote hepatic carcinogenesis or inhibit tumor development. Immune cells are key contributors to uh, immune surveillance uh, and may also drive hepatic carcinogenesis in chronic liver disease by increasing uh, inflammation. Um, to make it easier, we have uh, this graph. Uh, as you can see, uh, the oncogenesis is a balance between the tumor suppression and the tumor uh, promotion. Uh, immune surveillance is controlling the tumor suppression through uh, the immune cells, the natural killer cells, the CD4 cells, CD8 uh, cells, through the mediator and leukotrienes like interleukin-10 and interleukin-17. Uh, On the other hand, we have the tumor promoter factors, which are mainly uh, the inflammation uh, uh, and the fibrogenesis with uh, the previously uh, detailed cascade. Uh, so to have the whole uh, uh, image of the topic or the uh, issue, gut microbiota are causing uh, uh, inflammation and fibrogenesis. And on the other hand, it is controlling immune surveillance uh, by um, different mechanisms. Coming to the uh, most applied and the practical part of our uh, talk today, which is the prevention. How could we uh, use the previously uh, mentioned, uh, um, the previously mentioned um, uh, data about the uh, uh, microbiota? How can we use it to target uh, uh, prevention of hepatocellular carcinoma. Oh. Um, uh, actually, and till now, no therapeutic options are available for hepatocellular carcinoma prevention uh, besides treating and the underlying uh, disease. Uh, the gut microbiota liver uh, axis represents a promising targets for prevented approach, uh, preventive approaches to uh, prevent the development of hepatocellular carcinoma. Targeting the gut microbiota liver axis represents an exciting and understudied clinical uh, opportunity uh, uh, supported by large number of studies. Uh, several small-scale clinical studies have suggested that antibiotics such as norfloxacin and rifaximin increase survival in patients with uh, liver uh, cirrhosis. Uh, other approaches with low risk of severe adverse effects like the probiotics 
or fecal microbiota transplantation can be used for HSCC uh, prevention. The gut microbiota liver access involved in many complications of chronic liver disease and could be targeted to kill several birds with one stone uh, uh, because microbiota is also implicated in uh, liver fibrosis, portal hypertension, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, hepatic encephalopathy, and many complications targeting the microbiota will help not only to prevent hepatocellular carcinoma, but also to prevent all these complications. Targeting this axis is unlikely to have a major effect on patients in which the gut liver axis is not dominant, uh, a dominant driver of disease progression. HCC development and the mortality, for example, uh, those with uh, prenatal hepatitis B virus infection, high hepatitis B virus titer, and the minimal liver fibrosis. Uh, there is accumulating evidence that the gut microbiota modulates response to chemotherapy and immunomodulatory uh, therapies. New data uh, is supporting the concept of targeting gut microbiota in uh, uh, liver access for uh, the treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma with increased understanding of the underlying pathophysiology uh, the number of clinically feasible approaches to target the gut microbiota liver axis is growing. Uh, coming again to uh, this uh, graph, it was our uh, previous one, but we will uh, discuss it this time from the uh, perspective of the uh, therapy. Uh, to prevent hepatocellular carcinoma, we have to target the mechanisms that microbiota could uh, cause liver cancer through. So we may uh, use antibiotic to uh, target dysbiosis and the leaky gut. We may use probiotics for the same uh, reason. Uh, we can use uh, the um, uh, TLR antagonists to prevent the uh, leaky gut complications and sequences with the MAMS uh, passage and the lipopolysaccharide uh, flow. Uh, we can use inhibitors of bacterial metabolism to uh, prevent the bacteria, bacterial metabolites uh, from reaching the uh, liver and causing the cascade of hepatic carcinogenesis. Uh, to start with the most important one uh, and the most studied one, which is the antibiotics. Uh, decreasing and eliminating bacteria that have a high ability to translocate will reduce bacterial translocation and so inhibit pro-inflammatory signaling rising from leaky gut. Selective antibiotics may also block the production of HCC promoting bacterial metabolites such as uh, the oxycholic uh, acid. Uh, we have uh, some studies uh, mouse studies that uh, studies the uh, continuous gut sterilization by cocktail of oral antibiotics. Um, uh, and actually, it was effective in reducing the number and size of hepatocellular carcinoma tumors. It also reduced liver uh, fibrosis uh, severity. Um, actually, the administration of antibiotic at late stages of carcinogenesis with microscopic tumors already exists. Uh, we have uh, some studies about giving the antibiotic, uh, of course, in, in mouse, uh, and um, studying the effect of these antibiotics on the uh, progression of hepatocellular carcinoma and the multicentricity and the size of hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, uh, findings from MISC cannot be translated anyway directly to patients. The main problem here is the long-term administration of the antibiotic cocktail, which will uh, deplete the most uh, detectable uh, commensal microbiota and maybe also nephrotoxic such as uh, neomycin, which they utilized in this study. So in humans, we usually uh, utilize single antibiotic with a high safety profile in patients with chronic liver disease, which is the only clinical uh, approach. Actually, we have uh, good results for two antibiotics. The first is norfloxacin, and the second one is rifaximin. 
um, vancomycin, which is the third one, uh, couldn't be used because it has severe adverse events on the long-term use and can't be utilized for uh, a longer duration. Um, of course, gram-negative bacteria are the most uh, adept at translocating to the mesenteric lymph nodes and are the most frequent cause of spontaneous bacterial protonites. The first one, norfloxacin, which is poorly absorbed quinolone, uh, is currently the drug of its choice for uh, prophylaxis, either primary or secondary against spontaneous bacterial uh, peritonitis in cirrhotic patients. But uh, uh, its long-term use uh, actually is safe, um, producing marked reduction of the gram-negative bacteria, uh, reduction of the one-year probability of developing uh, SBB, improving the survival, uh, but the main uh, problem here is the antibiotic resistance. With the long-term use of uh, norfloxacin, we got uh, a high rate of antibiotic resistance. So the second one, which is very successful, is rifaximine. Rifaximine, uh, a broad-spectrum antibiotic, uh, excellent safety profile. Uh, it was approved, uh, firstly, for management of travelers' diarrhea, and now uh, it got an FDA approval for the use in prevention of uh, hepatic encephalopathy. Uh, it also uh, reduces uh, the uh, chances for developing spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, uh, improving portal hypertension, increasing survival, uh, and which is the most important to us, reduces the hepatocellular carcinoma in uh, the aforementioned uh, mouse model, which is then CCL4 uh, with cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, actually, we don't have uh, cumulative evidence about the role of rifaximine for preventing hepatocellular carcinoma uh, uh, in uh, humans, despite the large number of patients who are receiving rifaximine for long durations. Okay. Um, the second option is the probiotics. Probiotics have been proposed as a mean of re-equilibrating the gut microbiota and chronic liver disease, so re restoring the beneficial bacteria um, uh, uh, on the expenses of the harmful bacteria. Uh, but uh, the use of probiotics uh, carry a lot of controversy uh, based on the uh, use uh, of probiotics, which can't be, uh, which can't cause permanent colonization of the gut. Uh, also, uh, we have a lot of uh, bacteria which included uh, in the probiotics with unknown mechanisms, a large number of different combinations of bacteria with different uh, probiotics that have not been uh, evaluated and compared for their efficacy and also safety in patients with chronic liver disease. So far, probiotics have only been investigated in uh, murine uh, hepatocellular carcinoma models and data in patients and humans are lacking. Uh, we have uh, some data about the use of um, combinations of probiotics, uh, like the VSL3 uh, and the RAT model of then induced hepatocarcinogenesis, then CCL4. Uh, with good results. We have also uh, a mixture called uh, BROHIP with uh, good re results in reducing tumor size and uh, weight. Um, the um, following option is the fecal microbiota transplantation. Um, actually, it was successful in management of some diseases like the cholesteridium difficile infection, uh, resulting in restoration of eubiosis, and it was superior to antibiotic, antibiotic therapy in Clostridium difficile in some studies. Um, and actually, um, fecal microbiota transplantation was studied in NASH and cirrhosis, and we have some randomized control trial about uh, the uh, effect of uh, FMT on the amelioration of hepatic and peripheral insulin resistance in patients with metabolic syndrome uh, who had received uh, such transplantation. Um, but the, the uh, problem uh, with the fecal microbiota transplantation 
uh, which is uh, could prevent its use or uh, applicability in our patient with chronic liver disease is the risk of viral infection through which uh, uh, that could be transmitted from uh, patients to uh, another or from person to another through the fecal microbiota uh, transplantation. So we do seem to have a technical issue here. Apologies for that. Uh, Professor El Casas, I don't know if you're still there. You've gone offline. We have uh, a variety of TLR, TLR4. Yeah. Pro Professor, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, yes. Super. You, you were offline for a second there. Um, Apologies for okay. that. That was seems to have been a technical issue. Can I also ask you though, to maybe to conclude your presentation in, in two, three minutes? Yes. Since we're running yes, yes. short of run. time, huh? but I'm already gone. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a variety of TLRR4 uh, antagonists, um, many uh, compounds that are uh, actually uh, used or Okay. <clears throat> yes, uh, none of these TLR, uh, TLR antagonists uh, uh, have been tested in clinical trials in patients with uh, chronic liver disease and hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, yes, uh, also uh, the brokinetics. Uh, brokinetics are other agents that have been tested uh, in, in the intestinal bacterial overgrowth in liver cirrhosis patients. Uh, the most studied one was cisabride, which inhibits intestinal bacterial overgrowth and the bacterial translocation, uh, both in animal models and in patients with uh, cirrhosis. But actually, we don't have conclusion about its effect uh, in uh, patients with uh, cirrhosis and HCC. Uh, what was also studied is the non-selective beta-adrenergic blockers, uh, probranolol. Uh, probranolol uh, uh, is a potential uh, role, has a potential role for hepatocellular carcinoma uh, prevention um, and can be uh, used also because it's, uh, of its brokinetic role. Uh, to conclude, Overwhelming evidences support a key contribution of the gut microbiota to multiple aspects of liver disease progression, thereby contributing uh, to a hepatic uh, environment that promotes the development and the progression of HCC. The mechanisms uh, which is the gut microbiota promotes the development of chronic liver disease and the HCC include dysbiosis and leaky gut. It is not clear whether chronic inflammation driven by the translocation of MAMS from the leaky gut is the dominant contributor to uh, hepatocarcinogenesis, whether alterations of the bacterial metabolites are restricted to specific diseases, uh, or whether both mechanisms work synergistically for hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, some alterations of the gut microbiota are probably disease-specific, and therefore uh, some mechanisms by which the gut microbiota promotes the progression of liver disease and HCC could be also disease-specific. Uh, as many of the key changes in the gut-liver axis occur in the small intestine and possibly also within mucosa adherent microbiota, Better analysis of the human microbiome at different anatomic sites is needed. Finally, many types of chronic liver disease that confer a high risk of HCC development can to be adequately modeled in mice. Thus, more efforts should be put into translating our current knowledge on HCC promoting the role of the gut level access into well-designed trials in patients. Thank you so much. And, uh, Sorry for uh, taking some time over this. Oh, no, 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 it's perfect. Thank you so much for all these insights. Uh, I'm sure we'll have 
questions. The first questions are already there. It was a great pleasure to, to listen to you. And, and maybe let me just start then. There, there's, there's always this interest in, 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 in probiotics. Um, you know, and, and here's also the question, do you think probiotics can be ta taken uh, even as a, as a preventive measure for certain diseases like leaky gut was one question. And are there any particular strains that you recommend when you talk about probiotics? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, we, we don't have um, large studies or randomized control studies um, detailing the effect of, probi of probiotics in preventing hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, also, uh, most of the probiotics are not well studied uh, for the use in patient with chronic liver disease in terms of efficacy uh, and in terms also of safety. So till now, we have uh, some suggested combinations, some uh, scattered few clinical trials, but we don't have large trial. We don't have strong uh, evidence to recommend the use of probiotic for such use. Okay. How one question here is how can we differentiate between early and late carcinogenesis to start or, or to avoid antibiotic treatment? Uh, yes, uh, actually, we uh, are using um, staging guidelines uh, to stage hepatocellular carcinoma. The most famous one that we uh, rely on is the BCLC, the Barcelona Cancer Liver Clinic guidelines which classifies hepatocellular carcinoma into five stages. Uh, the first uh, stages, 0A, are the early stages. Uh, the following three stages, B, C, and D, are the advanced stages. And also the management uh, relays on the stages that we uh, diagnose the patient in. We have curative interventions for the early stages, for zero and the A stages. We have palliative uh, treatments for B and C stages. We have nothing uh, other than uh, best supportive care for patients with uh, advanced uh, stage or stage D. Okay. What are your recommendations to avoid developing HCC or liver cirrhosis as caused by the microbiome? Um, uh, actually, we, we, uh, till now, we don't have um, a recommendation that it translated to uh, guidelines or uh, evidence-based recommendations regarding the microbiome. All the recommendations that we have to prevent hepatocellular carcinoma are usually related to the background of the disease. Uh, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma usually uh, arises on, on background of cirrhosis. So management of the cause of cirrhosis, like treatment of viral hepatitis uh, uh, C, uh, the uh, suppression of the viral replication in hepatitis B, uh, the management of NASH, the stoppage of alcohol uh, use, uh, all of these causes will uh, stop the uh, original disease and will then uh, uh, prevent the progression to cirrhosis and hence to hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, regarding microbiome, all what we have now uh, is the antibiotic. Uh, even the antibiotics used uh, in cirrhosis, we don't have much clinical studies in humans. We have uh, evidences coming from uh, mouse models for the use of antibiotics. Uh, to prevent hepatocellular carcinoma and cirrhotics, but actually we can't even give uh, a recommendation based on the evidences that we have. We are waiting for uh, more studies that will include a large number of, of uh, patients to um, get a strong recommendation. Okay, um, maybe one last question here and then we move on and bring uh, Professor Alvarez uh, to the to the stage um, do gut microbiota involved in promoting hepatocarcinosis um, is it only in diseased liver or can it also affect non-serotic liver um, excuse me uh, could you please repeat whether whether the um, the microbiota in promoting hepatocarcinosis is only mm. affecting diseased liver or also affecting non-serotic liver So, so maybe the question is, does there have to be a pre, um, uh, what, what, how, what, what should I call this, um, pre-effect or the, 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 well, 
Ah, do we have a technical issue again there? So the screen seems to be broken um, with Professor Alcazar's. Dr. Albure, do you want to come on here? Yes, Fabian, how are you? Good evening. Good evening. Good to meet you. I um, yes. seem to have had a technical issue there with uh, Professor El Casas. I, I think we, we, we have discussed today a very important issue because uh, microbiota is, um, is trending nowadays and microbiota is involved in everything. You, you know, a lot of trials uh, have been published over the last few years about the relations of microbiota with different diseases. Uh, I think uh, the Professor Casas addressed the, uh, this important issue and uh, we hope that uh, he will be with us to, to receive uh, some more questions from uh, the audience. But I think the time is, is running from us also. The time is running, yeah. That's why we already asked him there to, 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 to round it up. Maybe you want to introduce Earth and use this moment to, 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 to spend a minute on, on Earth and, and the association of what you do. And Professor Alcazas is also part of that. Okay. So uh, EARTH is an uh, abbreviation of the Egyptian Association for Research and Training in Hepatogastroenterology. We are a specialized society uh, that we started to work in 2017 in Egypt. We have uh, 12 experts uh, uh, composing the board of uh, EARTH. Uh, those experts are distributed in different areas of Egypt and different governorates. We focus in uh, doing some research courses and uh, training on ultrasound and training on endoscopy. And also we do regular scientific activities uh, to increase the knowledge of young physicians and gastroenterologists specifically. Uh, we have collaborations with the different international bodies starting from uh, International Association for the Study of Liver Disease. We collaborate also with World Gastroenterology Organization, which we are uh, a member of it. And also we collaborate with United European Gastroenterology. Uh, for UAG, we have um, uh, a position of, uh, the, in the Committee uh, of Equality and Diversity Committee, which I hold, and the International Association uh, for the Study of Liver, Professor Kassas, is holding the uh, secretary position of, for Africa. So uh, I hope that our colleagues uh, attending today's uh, meeting uh, who are living in Egypt or even in some countries because we are crossing the borders and we have uh, members from different countries. In the of course, Egyptians are welcomed everywhere in the Middle East and great professionals. Thank you very much. Around uh, the continent, uh, yes. Yeah, we, we hope to, to increase our membership in, from different countries surrounding us. Uh, and if anybody wants to, uh, to be a member, he can just uh, join our... Uh, a Facebook page. We use Facebook a lot in Egypt, more than Twitter or other uh, social media. So he can search for Egyptian Association for Session Training in Hepatic Gastroenterology in Facebook and join the, the, the page and send us a message. We will send him all the details and he will have access to all our uh, activities uh, free of charge. Super. I mean, as we mentioned before, today you can also win you participating here a yes. membership uh, with Earth and uh, yeah. We put a little link there into the chat function that if you click on that and you answer two questions relating to the two uh, talks that we had today, you can you can win a membership with Earth or EACMED. Yeah. That's so super. Yeah. So we are in touch with Professor El Casas, but he's um, he's not back with us. So it, it's very unfortunate, uh, Doctor Alvare. I'm, I'm I'm sorry for this. Um, we're we'll, trying to get him back on the line. We will repeat these events many times. So we hope that in the next time we will have uh, better connections. So I thank you. Unfortunately, we have to wrap it up like this then, I guess, unless he's coming back. We still, we still give it a time. I still have two, three things that I would like to, that I would like to say. We will have a survey coming up now, uh, post, post webinar. And, and of course, just like Earth, you can also follow Igis, uh, you know, on, on all of our channels. And like you say, um, Dr. Alvarez, it would be a great pleasure to have you back and, and, and maybe bring on 
speakers from Earth and then and continue with this with this collaboration between Aegis, Earth, and U Carbon. I think it's a good it's a good mix, um, and and I hope that we can that we can do more more things. One of the, the things that I forgot to mention also that we are establishing a Pan African Association for Microbiota and Helicobacter. And this is now in the final process of establishment. So we will have a lot of collaborations in the field of microbiota for sure. Dr. Avre, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank and you. thanks for, to everyone out there, whether you're in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Mexico, or Singapore. It was amazing uh, to have you. And I thank you very much for your time and attention. So I would close it here and um, maybe bring in a little message from our sponsor to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Sorry. Sorry ah, for the there you're back again. Yes, I'm Dr. really sorry. Are you still there? Yeah, sorry, it's okay. That's fine now. Yeah. Yes. Let's improvise then. That's what we're good at. Oh, we <laughs> have two questions before we close. Okay. Yeah, we have too many questions, but you know the time run up. So I would start with the one question here. Um, it's asking about the prokinetic drugs. Does it inhibit the intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Can we use prokinetic drugs just to prevent bacterial overgrowth? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, we, we use the prokinetic drugs to decrease the intestinal transit time and to reduce the intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, the intestinal permeability and the bacterial translocation. Uh, and this was proved in the experimental models of cirrhosis in, and, and also in, in patients. Um, as we mentioned, the most commonly used one was cisabride. Also, we have some studies about the use of propranolol. Uh, Propranolol through its uh, um, uh, effect on adrenergic uh, activity could provide the same uh, uh, action of uh, the brokinetic uh, through decreasing the intestinal transit time. Okay, so one more question. Um, yes. And just uh, choose one who was not, that was not answered before. Uh, is there any impact of chronic liver disease in normal microbiota? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, most studies uh, test the change in the microbiota uh, composition in patients with chronic liver disease. Uh, we propose that the microbiota could be um, one of the causes for the progression of liver disease. But on the other way, we have many factors in patients with chronic liver disease that could change the microbiota itself. Um, among these uh, causes are the malnutrition. Uh, among these causes are the um, multiple drugs that uh, are received by patients with chronic liver disease, uh, the uh, need for antibiotic in, in many occasions, in patients with chronic liver disease, uh, for sure, the composition of microbiota could be changed in patients with uh, chronic liver disease and advanced, especially advanced liver disease. Is this, is this happening with liver cancer? Does Yes. Okay. Yes, but the differences in, in, uh, in liver, uh, the differences in, in, in the change of microbiota is not so much between the patient with hepatocellular carcinoma and those who are living with advanced liver disease or liver cell failure. Uh, also, and as we uh, stated in our uh, in, in the presentation, uh, there is a changes that is that is uh, disease specific, which is specific to each type of uh, chronic liver disease. We have changes uh, uh, specific to the um, alcoholic liver disease, changes to NASH, especially. Um, there uh, were no, no much data about the uh, 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 changes in microbiota in patients with viral hepatitis, as we mentioned, uh, but we have for um, alcoholic liver disease and uh, NASH. Okay, so one final question. Um, is there any role for probiotics in treatment viral hepatitis or you are an expert in viral hepatitis you know and Egyptians are all Egyptians are experts in viral hepatitis and treatment with the direct acting antiviral drugs for example so uh, uh, do you think that 
We can use probiotics in any type of viral hepatitis or use it to prevent uh, carcinogenesis or uh, carcinoma. Uh, for treatment of viral hepatitis, for sure, I, I don't think. I don't have any data about that, especially that we have uh, now successful uh, treatments for the management of viral hepatitis, either C or B. Yeah. Uh, but for treatment or prevention of liver cancer, and as we discussed in the presentation, yes, we have some studies, we have some data coming from animal models about the role of prokinetics. We have some preliminary data about uh, cisabride use and the propranolol use for the prevention of hepatocellular carcinoma, but actually uh, no strong evidence that we can relay on to uh, give a recommendation for their use uh, for prevention of hepatocellular carcinoma till now. Um, actually, we, uh, this field, the prevention of HCC, is in need for many studies. A lot of studies are required to prove uh, 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 anything or to find any medication that could provide uh, us a, a prevention for hepatocellular carcinoma occurrence. Uh, even uh, as we discussed, the uh, antibiotics, which is theoretically um, uh, helpful in, in many aspects of the complications of liver disease and uh, theoretically could be beneficial in preventing HCC, but we don't have much data about its use, like rifaximine and, and neumycin. Thank you very much, Professor Kossas. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, all the audience. We have still 1.7k or more from different parts of the world. So with this, we conclude the session and we hope to see you again in IGS activities. So, uh, Fabian. Super. Thank you so much to both.